Hey there you guys, it is Irene Lyon from IreneLyon.com and thank you for being here, first of all. Now, I am always talking about our health via our nervous system and how to heal trauma and why we want to heal trauma and all of the elements that are involved in really just growing our resiliency and capacity as human beings. And the other day, I was talking to someone that was interviewing me on a podcast. Um, it was a podcast on entrepreneurship, which I am. And um, he had never heard of the term neuroplasticity. Now, neuroplasticity is basically a fancy word that basically means that we as human beings have the capacity to change, to rewire, to, to unwire our hardwired habits and I've done another vlog on this topic called we are not hardwired so make sure you check that out I'll post that below but here's the thing he had never heard of it so I'm like okay well here is a really good metaphor or analogy for this topic think about train tracks now two train tracks running side by side and one of the tracks is always used all the time. So you've got this big train, freight train, let's say, with lots of cargo on board, and that is the path, that is the track that is always used. So I'm paralleling this to human beings, our habits, how we do things, how we live our life, how our brain works, how our body works, even all the way down to how we digest food and how our immune system works. We get into these grooves as human beings because of our genetics, but also mainly because of our environment and how we relate to our environment, what we put into our body, who we relate with, and how we practice um, and self-study our own internal habits. So we've got this, go back, and, go back to the train, we've got this track that's really well grooved. That is basically there because that's how we've always been, or that's how we've been for the most part of our life. Now. When we think about our desire to change tracks, to go from track A or the track that we're used to and to move to a different track which might be a healthier track or a more fit track or working with our mind in a different way or how we deal with stress or people, etc. We can't just take this freight train that's got so much cargo in it and just jump the track, right? It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Unless, of course, you have really good um, powers that just enable you to do that. But thus far, I haven't met anyone that does have these powers, which is why every year, we as humans go through the whole craziness of New Year's resolutions. We recommit to the things that we didn't fulfill the year before, the, the, the failures of our resolutions, which I can tell you is very large. If we were better at it, we wouldn't have to do the same things over and over again. And many of our health industries wouldn't exist because people would just make a decision to change the track and they would do it. But the thing is, is that it's not that easy. And the reason why I believe is because we try to make these changes without, first of all, assessing that there's this grooved pattern that we've had for so long. But what we want to do is we need to slow down that train. We need to assess what is actually in that train, right? Is it just an empty passenger train with not a lot in it, you know, simple little pathway that's been, that's been grooved? Or is it a train that has tons of heavy cargo that has been on that track for so long, so much that we don't even realize it's there, right? It's just going, going, going. So we need to slow that track down, that train down, bring awareness to that track before we can even consider bringing it over to the other side. Once we slow that down, we have to then take the stuff out, right? We can't just shift it over because that train is so heavy. We need to take the stuff out. Then we need to dismantle the train. We need to take it apart piece by piece. And then once we do that, we can start to transfer it over but once it gets to that other side, to that new track, 
what do we have to do? We have to put it back together. We have to get the fuel, the coal, whatever it is that drives that train back into the system. We need to find someone to, to drive the train, whether it's a, it's a computer or an actual person. And once we get on that track and we start going, which is what often happens when we embark on a new type of lifestyle routine, behavioral change, etc. Not only do we want to get on that truck, but we have to train the conductor or the computer system all of the turns, all of the hills, all of the times it has to slow down, all of the times the bell needs to go off because it's crossing a, um, a crosswalk or a road. All these little things have to be put into this new track, this new train, and the path that it's about to go on. So this is the parallel I'm making to how we go into this desire to change something in ourselves, in our mind set, in our mind body set, and how we maybe relate to the environment, whether it is a wellness habit, fitness habit, changing how we respond to stress, healing old traumas, which is my specialty. This idea of neuroplasticity, it goes both ways. It is what creates our habits, that track A where we're grooved, right? And often not always the best habits. They're often sometimes more, the, I call it the dark side of neuroplasticity. The power of the dark side. And then we want to change to this new track. That also is because of neuroplasticity. So this process of slowing down the track, the train, taking it apart, doing that whole switchover, rebuilding it back up, and then teaching either the conductor, or in this case, your body system, how your mind relates to your body, the new way takes time. And we tend to think that we can go into these new ways of doing things, we can tackle neuroplasticity in you know, six steps or 12 steps, or in a matter of a month, or 30 days, or 21 days, 90 days. And we fall short because we think that we can just make the switch and then it just goes on autopilot. Trains don't work that way. They always need to have uh, um, something fine-tuning it, something shifting it, changing it. So the next time you make a decision to change something, to improve something, to change a dark side sided habit, whether it's a certain addiction or a way of relating to your partner or your kids, first of all, be very gentle on yourself and know that it isn't something that you can just jump over. Right? We get really down on ourselves when we just can't change the habit. Think of that train. If that train has been, like I said, on that track for so long and it's got lots of stuff inside of it, it isn't easy just to do that. We need to dismantle it. We need to bring awareness to it. We might need to bring in some help to help us put it back together, take it down. It's not something that we could just do on our own. It requires support, it requires knowing how to do it, and it requires being able to look out for the bends in the road and the ascents and descents and all those times that we meet, need to put the bell on to warn the cars and the pedestrians that that train is coming through. So that is a bit of a metaphor to explain neuroplasticity, the capacity for our brain, our mind, our body tissues, our organ systems to change. It cannot happen overnight. It can, however, happen when done properly in the right sequencing with the right steps and with the right support on board. All right. Um, needless to say, the person I was talking to who had never heard of neuroplasticity, he understood what it meant after this metaphor, this example, um, because all of us have certain habits that we've either tried to change, we've successfully changed, or we've failed to change, and we try to go back over and over and over again. And it just really it rang true to him, so I thought I'd share that with you in a video. Um, that's it for now. I would love to know, have you tried to change a habit or an addiction or a relationship, and it's been so hard, and all you've wanted to do is just jump the track but you try to do that and you realize it's just not possible, let me know. And have you successfully changed one of your habits or more some of the dark sides of the way you do things? And has it taken this kind of time, this kind of support? 
I'd love to know. Let me know in either the comments below this video or send me an email. I'd love to hear about them. And if you would like more tools and resources, please check out my website, irenelion.com. Right now I've got a three part video training series. I'm gonna date this video that um, is gonna be going until May 2nd, 2016. So I will put the link just after this after this blacks out, so you can sign up for that if you're watching this, that this week, the week leading up to May 2nd. If this is after May 2nd, still head over to my website, grab some of the resources there. I've actually got an ebook on neuroplasticity where you can go into this a little, little deeper, learn a bit of the science, and then if you would like to do some of the practices with me through some of my courses. That's it for now. Thank you so much for being here, and we will talk to you next time. Bye.